Hello, welcome to this video about Shane McGowan. I used to know Shane back in the 1980s when the Pogues first started and I have some recollections of that time. I hope you can join me after this introduction. Where's he? Right, Shane McGowan. Now Shane McGowan, for those who don't know, was the leader of the Pogues. No, it wasn't the leader actually, the leader of the Pogues was Jem Feiner, who used to play the banjo and stand at the back. He was the organisational force behind the Pogues. The disorganisational force behind the Pogues was Shane McGowan, who has become legendary as an Irish um, rocker and hellraiser and all these other things. And um, there's just been a documentary, it's a film by Julian Temple called Croc of Gold. Go look down on this little cottage in Ireland and say, that little boy there, he's the little boy that I'm going to use to save Irish music. And I've been watching it and I'm going to tell you what I think about it and about Shane and my reminiscence of Shane right now. And if you want to watch any of my videos, then you'll find links to them in this thing up there. If you like rock and roll stories, here's my playlist. I hope you enjoy that. Right, Shane McGowan. I met Shane for the first time probably in 1980. Might have been slightly earlier because he was the lead singer in a band called the Nipple Erectors with Shan Bradley, who they were called the Nips for short and he used to do supports, as I recall it. I have certainly saw them on stage. I don't remember any songs that were stand out that I remember. I just remember they were a band that were, were on the circuit that I didn't particularly like or dislike. They were just there. I mean, quite an at the marquee I saw them, I, I don't know, anyway, perhaps I'm being unfair. So I really came across Shane properly when I I saw the Pokes twice in quick succession. Once they were busking, or some of them were, I remember speaking to Jem and asking him about doing shows, and I remember putting them on at the Sir George Roby in Finsbury Park, and I, I thought it was on a Tuesday night, it was in 1980. Three. It was the summer, I think, of 1983. People say it wasn't, and it was, and I don't know, whatever. It was me who put them on, and I saw them busking, or some of them busking, and I saw them doing a, sh a show, which might have been downstairs at the Clarendon. And I knew there's a bit of a vibe about them, a bit of a buzz. Just to digress a bit. When I was doing all this, mainly in, in the 19, let's say from the 1970s, 1980s, 1990s, etc. Live music was a lot more happening than it is now. Like, think of this, right? When I was born in 1954, it coincided with rock and roll, a huge movement that changed everything. Oh, music was never the same after rock and roll started. Bill Haley, etc. Just got paid. Chuck Berry, all these people, it became, it was R&B, the black R&B music of America, it was blues, it was all these things collided with and produced this kind of rock music. The next huge movement, there are a lot of other little things like rockabilly and all these other things, but the next huge movement was the Mersey scene, which is like the Beatles. Americans have it like it was a British invasion. But when you look at it, it was like in Britain, swinging London you had, you had all the bands from Liverpool, you had the Beatles, Jenna Pacemakers, Billy J. Raymer, you had all these people, the Rolling Stones were playing, the Pretty Things, it was like everything was going mad, the Yardbirds, it was a fantastic time. Now bear in mind that is like less than 10 years after rock and roll started. Then the next thing was like 67, the Summer of Love, Psychedelia, you had all, Jefferson Starship, you had all these Grateful Dead, all these people in the States, you had a similar thing happening here, you had um, bands like um, after I think family and people like that and it was heavy and it was like heavy rock and it was different to the pop of the Beatles but the Beatles got into it they did Sgt Pepper maybe they started it here then you move on to 1976 Hunk the Sex Pistols the Clash all these other things that's less than 10 years after that so this is what was happening at the time it was like so exciting every five six eight ten years something big was happening something major like rock and roll you know, brick pop like, you know, the first brick pop that is, not, not the second one, like um, psychedelia, like punk, huge movements in music, but nothing really much since, to be honest. So anyway, in 82 or 83, when I was, when I saw the Pogues, they were part of a little movement in London, which is like this Irish folky 
punky folk, really. It was like the Pogues were the Irish version. Of it. You had the men they couldn't hang, who were like, who were like often the Pogues um, support band. They were more general folk, like you know English folk. Their big song was like the Green Fields of France, which is a song by the veteran Australian um, protest folk singer Eric Bogle. So it was all happening, and I saw the Pogues. And Shane was obviously the lead at Signal of the Pogues. He was like the weakest link, frankly, in the band. He was great on stage, wrote great songs and all that, but he was a bit of a handful. I said, it's easy to forget. You look at somebody like Shane, you think, oh, he's just free spirit, he's all these sort of things. But it was, at the time, when you're trying to put on shows and when you want the band to entertain people, when you've got somebody who, like, goes away for like hours who doesn't show up on time for sound checks and things it's not a great it's not great because you you want people who are paying what their pound or two pounds what it was at the time to get in want to see what they're paying for and that's quite the basic thing of it so it it and i can remember i didn't really know shane well was i can remember meeting him at a gig or somewhere out, and I can't remember what it was, but I remember we were sitting with some more people and basically we were drinking, and he offered me, he went in his um, pocket of his great coat and came out with his fluffy, like, yeah, <laughs> fluffy, and there were about 10 pills or um, capsules and things. And he says, oh, I don't want anything, I don't want anything, go on, okay, okay, okay. And I said, quite naturally, I would thought, what are they? And he says, I don't know, but the red one's really good. <laughs> so it's like, but, but the red one's the, the other incident was, I had pretensions of working with the Pogues, and um, it was obviously not going to happen, because I was not good enough, because they were going to be big, and I was not good enough. So a guy called Frank Murray, who was a professional manager from Ireland, came along, and he looked after them. And one of the things he did for me to break my contract, to say thank you in effect, but here we go, was he put them on for a week at the Cricketers, the venue I was look, looking after, and basically they got paid, but, but I didn't pay them the going rate. Like So I made probably half of what we took to the door, which is a nice way of paying me off. They got some money, I got some money, it was great, and everybody was happy. The um, punters came and they fulfilled the venue for five nights, and it was great. And so that was good. And so that meant that Shane was like, knew about the venue, because he'd been there for like a week. And I remember when he was number one in the charts, or maybe number two, because I seem to remember hearing that it was never number one the first time around. But, but, but anyway, it doesn't matter. When he was like, played on the radio all the time the first time around, and it was a big hit, Shane came to the pub one Friday, I think it was Christmas Eve even might have been, or whatever, and he was absolutely skinned had no money whatsoever and I lent him, I think gave him this effect, 50 pounds I think, I can't remember it was now. So anyway, so if Shane got totally wrecked over that particular Christmas, that was partially thanks to me. So blame me for the way it looks now. Because that's the big thing. Shane now can't walk, I think he's a bit of a bad way. In this film he came across, they. I think that Julian Temple, obviously, on one hand, is trying to um, idolise Shane, and on the other hand, shows that it's not all um, glamorous, because he's in a bad way. He's in a wheelchair. I don't think many of his organ function. He's still an alcoholic. He still drinks more than he should. I think he's got a way of managing it. He can barely talk. Well, he joined the, the, the club, I suppose. He can barely talk. On the list of, of people on uh, performing, there was just beside Ray Knight and Sarah, the one he did with Johnny Depp. Yeah. They just had, they didn't have Johnny Depp's name, and they just said B. Ah. He's still quite lucid, and he hasn't really written songs of any great magnitude. He's certainly not been able to perform with anything like the verve and the vigour that he had in his glory days, because when Shane was on stage back then, let me tell you, it was something to be reckoned with. I mean, I could stand there, but I, I, I remember now, even though it was like, what, this is the early 80s, 40 years ago, and I remember standing there spellbound watching him, and he was like a force of nature. He was a very nice guy. I didn't have much to do with him 
quite frankly after this time, well after I left him the 50 quid, I, I don't think I actually spoke to him again. I saw the band on stage, I think it must have been at the Electric Ballroom or something like that, when Joe Strummer took over uh, Judy's because Shane, I think, got so out of it he couldn't actually perform then. Much I am a fan of Joe Strummer's and I used to follow the in pub, the Wunner Wunners. It, the, the Pogues were not the same without Shane. Even with Joe Strummer, they were not the same. So Shane was a, f a huge force and that's a Shane I know and I enjoyed watching the, the the film, but it brought back as many sad memories as happy memories. Right, so that's my thing about Shane, my recollection about Shane. He's a very talented man and I hope he has a fantastic long life. So if you like this, please like it. If you didn't like it, you know what not to do. Please subscribe, please subscribe to this and let me know what you think by commenting. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Goodbye.